people, members of the truth. It's easy to be a friend, but it's hard to be a parent. Kate Duran was always there to buy her child the newest video games, but when it came to being a parent, she was very much absent. August 18, 2010 started off as a pretty normal day for the Parks and the Durants. Hayden didn't have time to look after Jesse, so she had to spend the day with Sydney at the park home. But there was something different about August 18. On August 18, the babysitter, Danny Brooks, was not there to keep an eye on Sydney and Jesse. And Hayden Duran knew it. On August 18, Jesse seemed especially excited to go over to play with Sydney. Jesse was excited because she wanted to see the real gun that the Parks had in their home. Hayden Duran knew it. Yet she allowed her daughter to go into a home unsupervised with a weapon. And Jesse Duran later took that gun, aimed it at Sydney Park, and put a bullet through her temple, killing her. We aren't here today to blame Jesse Duran for the death of Sydney Park. But Jesse wasn't a perfect kid. Jesse was violent. Jesse had an obsession with guns. No 11 year old, especially Jesse Duran, should have ever had access to a firearm. In the state of Midlands, it is the parent's duty to exercise reasonable care to ensure that their child does not pose an unreasonable risk of bodily harm towards others. And that's why the plaintiff is suing Hayden Duran in today's case for negligent parental supervision. We, the plaintiff, bear the burden of proof. We needed to prove to you by a preponderance of the evidence, meaning more likely than not, that Hayden Duran did not exercise reasonable care and was negligent, that Jesse Duran posed an unreasonable risk of bodily harm, and as a direct and proximate result of this, Sydney Park is dead. Members of the jury, we have met our burden. First, we showed you that Hayden Duran was negligent. Expert witness Dr. Solo took the stand and told you that Jesse Duran posed a special risk in relation to firearms and showed signs of this before August 18th. Signs that Hayden Duran either saw herself or was made aware of by others. You heard that Hayden Duran composed an email expressing her concern with Jesse's obsession with mass shooting video games. Yet, she was the one who continued to buy Jesse these video games. She also received a notification from the school. In this notification, she was made aware that Jesse had attempted to kick, bite, and hit other children. And that this wasn't the first time. Yet, Hayden Duran did nothing to reprimand Jesse. But that wasn't the only warning Hayden Duran had. You also heard from the babysitter, Danny Brooks, that she confronted Hayden about Jesse's violent behavior. In fact, just one day before August 18th, Danny Brooks told Hayden Duran she didn't think Jesse should be allowed in the Park household anymore since there was a weapon. Yet the very next day, Hayden Duran allowed Jesse in the Park home, unsupervised, in the presence of a fire. Members of the jury, that's negligence. Second, Jesse Duran posed an unreasonable risk of bodily harm, and Sydney's death was the direct and proximate cause of this. Now, during trial, there was a bit of a confusion as to what this burden actually was. We, as the plaintiff, have no burden to prove that Jesse Duran had a motive or intended to actually harm Sydney Park. But pulling that trigger was no accident. You heard from forensic <coughs> investigator Jewel Sebastian that it is certain to a high degree of scientific certainty that Jesse Duran took that gun, aimed it at Sydney Park, and pulled the trigger. In fact, Jesse Duran herself told you that that's exactly what she did. Now, Jesse Duran claimed that she didn't know that the gun was loaded, but she also told you that she previously lied about this exact instance in the past. So let's look at what the evidence shows us. Jewel Sebastian told you that it was Jesse Duran's fingerprint on the bullet of the gun. 
It was Jesse Duran who searched how to load a revolver moments before going to the Park household. Jesse Duran loaded that gun, aimed it at Sydney Park, and as a result, an 11-year-old girl is dead. However, in today's trial, the defense has also taken on a burden of their own. In order for you to rule in favor of the defense, they must have proven by a preponderance of the evidence that Andy Park was not only negligent, but more negligent than Amy Duran. Let's explore this room. Andy Park owned a gun. Yet you heard from Ash DeRosa that there was nothing unreasonable about the way the Park stored their gun. They kept it in one of the toughest safes in the country, kept the combination away from it, unlabeled, and also stored the bullets separately. Jesse Duran was a violent child with an obsession for guns, yet Hayden Duran took no actions to try to reprimand this behavior. And now, Sydney Park is dead. We ask you to find Hayden Duran liable. Thank you. Thank you. Does the defense 